Hello, everyone. Today, I'll be speaking on a topic I have been dying to share with everyone since we decided to lead um, a project research within the chaos community. It is open source DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, transitioning from intentions to impact. So at the chaos community, we have a bunch of metrics around governance, around evolution and development, around software, around um, DEI events, and so many other metrics. However, one day during our um, DEI working group, we decided to ask ourselves the question, how do we know if our metrics are as effective as we want them to be? Or how do we know if this projects are making the impact in real time as we expect them to be. We weren't so sure how to go about this, so we decided to lead um, a, an interview campaign specific to underrepresented groups to help us understand the um, effects and impact of these metrics. And that is what we are going to be discussing about today. I am Anita Ehuman. I'm a developer advocate and um, a technical writer. And for three years, I've been contributing to open source communities around different um, projects and different areas. I'm currently contributing to the Chaos community where I'm a member of the DEI badging initiative. I am also leading the um, interview campaign specific to underrepresented groups. I am contributing to other interesting communities like Layer 5, Open Source Collective, and um, the Good Dogs Project. And um, I'm also a technical writer at AutoCloud, so that is all about me. During this section, we're going to be looking at the distinguish. Um, during this section, we're going to look at the difference between intentions and impact. We're going to talk about the state of diversity, equity, and inclusion in open source the role of DEI metrics and um, the strategies that we can use to foster DEI within our respective communities. Then we're going to move further to look at best practices to recruitment, retention, and support, and examples of some awesome open source communities that are championing initiatives to help foster diversity, equity, and inclusion. So let's get into it. Intentions versus impact. Well, when we talk about intentions, what do we mean? We simply, intentions is simply how we feel or what we mean to do, what we have in mind to do about a particular thing or how we intend to do execute a particular thing. Whereas impact, on the other hand, simply means how we make others feel and the outcome of our actions. Now, in we could intend to do something really, really good to make people feel great about themselves. However, the way we, the way in which we execute those um, intentions determines the outcome that we are going to get, whether we are going to actually make those persons feel good at the end of the day or whether or not. And within the open source space, we have seen that there have been so many open source projects that intend to drive and I even commencing DEI projects to help um, drive more engagement and um, participation from underrepresented groups within their projects. And however, the data and outcome of this says otherwise, and this often leaves the question, leaves room for the question, what is it exactly that we are doing wrong and how can we fix it? Well, in 2021, the Linus Foundation led the biggest uh, DEI survey to help understand the state of um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And after that um, survey, we were able to um, get the report that told us, that says that 82% of the participants did feel welcome within their communities or within open source communities that they are participating in. However, 18% did say otherwise, and that is the number that we are most concerned about. What happened to that 18%? Well, it is often said that the state of a particular community or a community can always be con um, considered or assumed to be friendly and welcoming, but it all depends on who exactly it is, was asked the question, and where or how the questions were asked. And so, 
when the questions of do you feel welcome within open source was thrown, we saw that 38% of non-binary and third gender persons did say that they did not feel welcome within their communities, whereas 28% of people of color, um, specific to North America, did say they do not feel welcome within their communities that they're contributing to. 26% of women I'd, um, came out to say they do not feel welcome. 25% of people with disability, 18, and then these are the number of persons that we did receive to tell us that they do not feel welcome within their communities. And so what went wrong? This survey also further went on to tell us that 30% of persons believe that the code of conduct which exists in respective communities cannot be enforced or 36% experienced a kind of stereotype, did say they experienced some kind of stereotype while participating in their respective communities. 19% experienced some form of language barriers while collaborating and they haven't gone back to participate since then. 17% feel that they have been excluded and do not feel belong, feel like they belong within the open source community. And um, there also have been reports that women, non-binary and people of the LGBTQ and also people with um, disability experience two times more violent threats within um, open source communities that they're participating in. And then there's three times more violent threats to transgender people within this community. Whereas people from underrepresented groups do not generally feel welcome at all. And this survey also tells us that cases of microaggressions through insensitive jokes, racism, sexist comments, and hostility are some of the common things that participants indicated that they experienced while collaborating within open source communities. And these are like so many challenges that uh, people experience on a day-to-day -day basis while participating in open source community. And some of the challenges that actually stand in to um, hinder the DEI um, efforts that most communities are currently making include um, our conscious and unconscious biases, where sometimes people are intentional about trying not to make people on um, others get involved or putting on barriers and putting on walls that make others not come in. Whereas our unconscious bias comes in the sense that we are not aware of it, but based on our past experiences, on based on assumptions that we've made, we automatically develop this stereotype for specific people, and then we were hostile towards them or put out um our microaggressions towards these other people. Another thing that hinders this DEI is a lack of representation amongst our leadership, where we um we can see that a lot of times our our teams are always homo uh, are always filled up with um, homogeneous leaders, and so it is really really difficult to get or even um, see things from an, a more inclusive view, since every other person in the leadership or on the board is um, of a homogeneous group. And then the lack of um, multi -intera multicultural interaction where some communities have a particular culture of not welcoming, a long-standing culture of not welcoming other persons and uh, being hostile to underrepresented groups, which often leads to burnouts for most persons that intend to push forward with their participation or even we experience people silent quitting in situations like this because they don't know how to come up to say, okay, this is the reason why I'm dropping out. There are situations or um, circumstances where um, this also affects onboarding experiences for some people at the end of the day. And all of these tend to hinder people's participation. Now, another um, common challenge is um, the lack of sufficient technical skills and knowledge to individuals where some persons do have intentions of contributing However, they feel like they are not um, skilled enough to participate and knowledgeable in certain areas, and so their contributions may not be welcome. Now, I know I experienced this um the early days of my contributing where I felt like I may not be able to make as much impact as I wanted to because I do not have the technical skills that most of these open source um, projects are um are expected to have or are developed on. And that made me feel like I do not belong within these communities. And I, this also plays a huge role in so many other persons that um, at the end of the day, 
intend to contribute or participate. Another huge challenge that communities seem to, um, to experience in terms of um, spreading or um, championing diversity and inclusion is um, the insufficient resources. Now, most open source projects um, in terms of diversity and inclusion, they require a lot of resources, including time, including money, um, and also individuals to invest so much effort into these topics of diversity and inclusion. But most open source projects are unable to actually provide all of this. And at the end of the day, you see um, a small project that's trying to uh, get things in order, but do not have the financial support to actually um, give all resources to um, get more underrepresented groups to benefit from this equal rights. And um, this also often makes um, most organizations hesitant towards investing in diversity and inclusion because it does require a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of manpower. And then another um, challenge that most persons and communities experience is the ignorance to data. And we're often quick to say, um, if we made um, efforts to um, have 1,000 persons participate in our program or our outreach programs, and we got 500 people, then we've made enough, enough um, efforts. Next year, we're going to try again. And, and at the end of the day, that um, out of that 500 persons that we have got from this our um, effort or our initiatives, maybe just five or two at the end of the day um, are retained to actually collaborate and participate actively at the end of the day. And we do not bother to go back to review this data to make efforts or make um, improvements towards it. And um, well, how do we improve this or how do we actually target some of these challenges? That is where we have metrics come into the picture. Now metrics are um, a way that we can use to track and also measure the progress of our DEI efforts. And the chaos community has developed a bunch of metrics specific to diversity, equity, and inclusion that can be used as an indicator to uh, look at the state of diversity, equity, and inclusion, inclusion efforts within these individual projects. This metric can also help organizations to assess their DEI outcomes as well as progress. And um, by looking at these metrics, you can possibly ask yourself as an individual or as a project lead questions like, does my community or my project encourage healthy communication and collaboration? Do we have a valid um, code of conduct that is also enforceable? Is my community inclusive? And if not, what is the problem or what is it that I'm doing wrong? Are uh, events associated to my project actively inclusive to even individuals from underrepresented groups, do um, does our project also do a great job in terms of being accessible to people or individuals with um, some form of disability or the other? And finally, how inclusive are our leadership um, practices within these communities? Now, these are some of the questions that our metrics lead you asking yourself after going through them and um, some of these metrics currently span across four different areas where we have the event diversity for um, communities and conferences that have actually gone through our DEI badging um, initiative for events. You'll see that some of these do come in handy for reviewing your projects and helping you understand the state of your diversity, equity, and inclusion at your events. We have some metrics like the code of conduct for this event, diversity access ticket, which so many persons seem to be benefiting from today, the family friendliness and um, event accessibility and demographics, um, inclusive experience at events for both speakers as well as attendees, um, time inclusion for virtual events and um, public health and safety for participants within this event and then the event location inclusivity. Another um, focus area which our, met our DEI metrics cover is um, the governance where we have the board and council diversity and code of conduct for all open source projects. Then we have um, another focus area specific to leadership that highlights inclusive leadership, talks about mentorship and um, sponsorship to um, projects, upcoming open source projects. Then we have the project and um, community metrics 
that um, highlights um, areas like the chat platform inclusivity, documentation accessibility, discoverability and usability, and also issue label inclusivity. Another metrics, other metrics under this project and community includes the project burnout, project demographics, and also project um, psychological safety for members as well as maintainers to this individual project. Now you can see that our metrics currently um, ten, is tailored towards um, highlighting the primary areas within open source projects from the community area down to the leadership, down to how um, events and programs within open source are being carried out. Now, all of these metrics are um, focused towards helping us achieve one goal, which is benchmarking, um, can be used to benchmark against um, industry standards. So using these metrics as an individual community or as a project, you can use it to compare how much effort you are making in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion for your project and um, how effective this um, effort or um, practices that you're putting out is. These metrics can also help you to identify the disparities within your communities, areas that you didn't even know were lacking in terms of diversity and inclusion, but the community can um, attest to this. And so these metrics also helps um, draw your attention towards these areas that these disparities exist in. This metric can also help you to measure the impact of your DEI efforts and um, how effective it is. And then these metrics also help you to set goals and objectives for future um, purpose. Now, over the years, uh, since we started reviewing the um, communities and conferences for DEI badging, I have noticed that um, communities that initially and conferences that initially applied for some of our DEI badges and didn't get the gold um, badge, come back um, the year after with more improved effort towards their DEI badges with an aim to actually earn that gold badge. Now, it is not just about getting the gold badge to them anymore. It is about identifying areas where they are lacking and making contributions or making efforts towards uh, improving on those areas. We've seen communities adopt things like the family friendliness, their code of conduct and um, making out, making sure that this code of conduct are enforced at their respective events. We've seen um, communities and conferences support more inclusive practices, take on security measures to help um, other persons within their communities and conferences within that specific conference feel safe as they're coming or attending within those um, participations. So these metrics do more than just give you like a benchmark. They help you set goals towards your, um, your expectations for your individual um, community conferences as well as communities. And I really look forward to seeing the, out, um, the initiatives under the all-in specific to project badging and how other projects or individual open source projects can work towards also measuring the efforts of the diversity and inclusion, not just conferences, which we are currently focusing on. Now, by collecting some of these metrics, you get a better picture of where your community is, especially in a larger community where you can't possibly know everyone within the community or see the efforts and, uh, and actions of every single one within the community. But we want to be certain of how effective these metrics are. And that is why we decided to lead the um, chaos interview campaign for underrepresented groups. And like I said, this was brought on based on us asking ourselves individual questions as a group. And we're able to start planning for this particular project um, sometime August last year, 2022. And then we might be wondering, why did we do this? Well, the reason is underrepresented groups have always and been the most potential, um, the most individuals to benefit from DEI metrics within the open source community. And so what we at Chaos are trying to do is to connect with these different underrepresented groups and um, try to understand the, um, the efficiency of our chaos metrics by meeting with these persons one-on-one, -on -one, asking them their experiences and trying to get um, feedback based on 
their individual experiences from respective open source communities. Now, like I said, we began planning this project sometime August 2022, and then we launched the survey itself in October 2022. And since then, we've had over 150 participants for this project. And um, during this project, we're able to carry out carry out qualitative, which is a surface, and are currently leading the quantitative um, interviews. We, we are trying to accumulate the data. And um, with these quantitative interviews, we are trying to interview individuals from open source contributors down to maintainers, down to leaders and stakeholders from different um, group underrepresented groups. So we, we try as much as possible during this process to not um, put the labels for people, rather we want to hear what which underrepresented group is that they identify under and to hear from them the experiences specific to that um to the underrepresented groups and how they have been holding up within the open source communities and so we were able to ask questions like how unique how have your unique attributes or traits um affected your participation within the open source space if the, these are DEI metrics in any way align with their past or present experiences, whether or not our metrics have come in handy or helpful within, um, within their participation in the open source space and at what point this was. We are also trying to see if there's a way that these metrics can be improved on or implemented to better support their participation based on the underrepresented groups which they um, categorize themselves with. And so we have also been able to, so far with the results of or the research, which is still in progress, we have been able to get really great results and feedback telling us that um, in so many open source projects, there is an issue with enforcement in terms of code of conduct as some projects up to date are lacking the code of conduct for their particular open source project. We've also been able to identify some areas that in terms of um, enforcement, some open source projects do not even have specific standards that they want to follow to help um, spread topics of diversity and inclusion or to actually align diversity, equity, and inclusion goals with. And to date, so many individuals even have come forth to say that they're scared to own up or express themselves within open source communities based on their um their their distinctive feature because they're worried about the experience or the outcomes of um, owning up to who they are or what they are or how they identify within communities. And um, the team behind this particular com um, this particular research are awesome individuals from the chaos community, like the um, Girl Glink, Amstra Fandam, um, Sean Goggins, and Matt um, German Press. So and myself, of course, where all the awesome persons that have been working to see that we bring this survey to an end. And by the conclusion of this, we're definitely going to put out a report to get everyone updated on what we're able to find um, discover during the research and our findings in total. We might also put this in terms of write, um, white papers and also research papers. So if you're curious about this particular research, you can also hit me up about it. But what we hope to achieve or our outcome with this research is simply to ho we hope to understand how DEI um, is being practiced in this respective open source um, project based on or from the experiences or from the angle of uh, um, individuals that are underrepresented. We hope to um, understand um, based on this participants' feedback, how we can capture more um, DEI metrics that are yet to be addressed by the chaos community and within our DEI metrics already. We also hope to adopt and identify potential metrics that have been have not been um, discovered or outlined among our list of metrics yet. And we hope that with this research, we can improve on our existing metrics and our approach towards diversity and equity, um, equity and inclusion and push more on this, um, champion more on how more open source communities can adopt the chaos DEI metrics to help improve on their DEI practices as well. 
and there's so many strategies that I think or we think that um, open source projects can work in terms of um, improving and fostering diversity, equity, and inclusive practices within their communities. And um, some of these include first practicing allyship. Now I put this at the top because you it is really difficult to um, put yourself in someone's shoes until you decide to, it's difficult to uh, understand how someone else is um, reacting to certain things until you put yourself in their shoes. That is why being an ally is first step towards actually identifying or tackling this um, some of the challenges that we have highlighted um, during this section around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we can do this by showing up through actions for individual members within our open source community, not just um, saying the word, I am an ally, putting in the efforts, doing the work. And this means standing up for people within your community when they are being talked down on, which means bringing equal opportunities, opportunities that you think these individuals would benefit from, bringing it to them, mentioning these people in situations that you feel they deserve to be um, take on positions. This is what makes you an ally. And by being an ally, you're definitely going to see other areas where you can encourage um leadership and representation within projects because we still have to tackle with some of the projects of homogeneous um, leadership teams and until we address that particular angle it might be hard for us to completely educate people within communities about diversity and inclusion or equity um, if our teams, our leadership teams are still very homogeneous in, in nature. And then by being allies, we're definitely going to see other ways we can improve um, diversity, equity, and inclusion through accessibility audits for our projects, for our documentation, as well as resources. We also move forward to look at um, how uh, being an allyship is also going to make you or bring to light ways that you can create and enforce more code of conduct to support individual, uh, individuals within your communities that identify under specific underrepresented groups because um, it's one thing to have a code of conduct existing and then it's another thing to actually make that code of conduct effective in such a way that so many individuals benefit from it at the end of the day. And I noticed that there's a common reoccurring, um, there's a reoccurring statement from most of our participants during this um, survey from the chaos um, interview campaign where people say that, yes, the project that I'm contributing to does have a code of conduct. However, I never came across it until I decided to do um, critical research about this code of conduct. And um, if a code of conduct exists in a project, I feel like so many persons should be aware of it. Immediately they get involved in that community, right? However, this is the last thing that some persons resort to, maybe because they experience some form of discrimination or some form of unfair treatment before they decide that, okay, let me go and look for the code of conduct and see if I am right or um, there's something going wrong within this particular community. And then we can practice allyship by being open to feedback as leaders, being open to feedback, accepting feedback without um, feeling like we're being attacked on a personal note, um, opening up our minds to actually hearing how people feel from the community down to the uh, leaders and down to our, co um, our, our maintainers and every single person that is within our communities. Every once in a while, try to get feedback. You can do this through surveys. You can do this through, you know, just try to understand the data. But every once in a while, as a leader within an open source community, be open to feedback. And this is one way you can also practice this allyship we're talking about. You can also do this by collaborating with other communities like um, the, the um, inclusive naming community, the chaos DEI community, um, all in communities. These are like different open source projects that have active um, open source initiatives that um, produce, um, help you, check or review how your DEI practices are going on. Collaborating with them will help you uh, leverage some of the practices that they've listed out and you can better implement it within your project. You can also practice allyship by fostering a welcoming environment, uh, accepting, opening up to change and fostering a welcoming environment that actually accepts every individual regardless of their differences or their distinctive features 
welcoming them equally within that particular community. You can go on to provide support using resources and also um, other opening room for more opportunities for individuals to get involved, talking about mentorship, talking about um, sponsorships and so many other ways. These are ways that you can be an ally to members of underrepresented groups and actually stand your ground while being an ally. And also you can also look out for inclusive language scans that you can adopt and talking about how we um, we accept communications. Sometimes so many persons come within communities and the huge barrier within their collaboration is someone made an insensitive joke or someone said a, um, a vulgar term towards them or someone just said something that threw them off and that was the, the terrible experience they had and they didn't feel the need to come back afterwards so you can also consider um, adopting like inclusive language scans and this will help to um, take out or eliminate some of the sexist and um, racist terms that people often make within discussions sometimes which are not intentional sometimes come out as a mistake but with um, taking note of this um, inclusive language scans you can easily help other persons to also not um, bring up this and um, there's so many bots that uh, communities have implemented to help scan some of this um this vulgar terms that make other persons feel uncomfortable if you have a chat platform that you think you can implement some of these bots to scan the languages you can also do stuff like that and even in your project um, repositories you can implement some of the um, github actions that can help to scan some of the languages that are not friendly to help other persons participate and finally you can be an ally by letting the data inform your decision so now go back to your community and look from the top of the funnel down to the to the community level how inclusive is a top because it's um, from the leaders that you tend to understand how much effort in terms of diversity equity and inclusion is being made because it doesn't matter how inclusive the community is if the leaderboard is still in uninclusive the community will feel discouraged at the end of the day i have seen so many persons come up to say that they wanted to participate in a particular community but they decided to check out the team the core team of that particular community and at the end of the day they realize that it's um, a homogeneous um, team of white um, male um, leaders and so they feel like even if they made effort to contribute their contributions might not be as valued as it would be in an all-inclusive team and so let your data inform your decisions in terms of leadership, in terms of um, onboarding, in terms of encouraging collaboration, in terms of outreach. Try to use your data as a community to um, make effort towards improving some of these um, existing challenges as well. And then um, best practices that we can take towards recruitment, retention, and support for underrepresented groups are first, we can try as a community to carry out outreach programs, outreach programs that help underrepresented groups to participate, outreach programs that bring to light areas within a community that underrepresented groups can also be um, get involved within communities. And so provide opportunities for them to get involved within your open source project and also um, carry out workshops and mentorship programs that get more persons to also see reasons why they should participate within the open source space you can also develop inclusive onboarding culture now i know that the early years of my participating in open source one of the challenges that i experienced for most communities was the onboarding process now i've seen so many other persons come forward to say that this was a, a hindrance for them as well because the onboarding process was not as welcoming as they thought it was and so as a community leader if you're trying to um, support to retain some of your contributors, particularly those from underrepresented groups, then you should work on improving the onboarding culture within that particular community or within that particular group. You should also work on providing more mentorship and training for these, um, these individuals and participants and let them know about the nature 
of um, your community in terms of diversity and inclusion, areas that your community is working towards improving and areas that need more hands on deck. You can also provide a mentorship and training towards that as well. Offer flexible times and schedules. Now, so many persons have said that the reason why they were not able to speak at a conference is because the timing was not convenient for them. Now, I understand that the time difference is something that we cannot avoid. However, there are ways that we can work towards developing flexible time schedules for respective contributors within open source communities. Now, this means if we're hosting workshops or you're doing boot camps and you know that, okay, persons from this particular area might not be able to participate due to the time difference, then that is something to consider as a leader to make sure that it is worked towards so that maybe there's a time shift for persons from this particular time zone or something that covers people from this particular time zone so that everyone in the community feels like they are welcome at the end of the day. We can also work towards providing equal opportunity for leadership. Now, over the years, there have been so many reports that come back to give us feedback that, um, that give us feedback that um, a lot of times, women and other genders within the communities are not always given the rights that they deserve in terms of leadership and in terms of participation. And we have even the feedback from the Linus um, 2021 DER reports also states that 82% um, of the participants or respondents were actually male and 18% um, of the of the respondents identified as women and non-binary or third gender um, members. And so this lets us know that not only is the participation from other genders and other underrepresented groups low compared to the rest, it lets us know that we have to do more in terms of bringing this person on board in our leadership roles and also finding ways that we can get them involved. Then we should also recognize and collaborate with divers and in, um, diver, uh, recognize and celebrate diverse contributions. Now, um, Gus from the Gus from Open Collective, Gus Austin, has also been leading some projects to help um, recognize and also appreciate contributors in open source for their contributions through giving incentives and even paying these people. I thought that was an excellent project because so many times people make people make contributions within the open source communities for years and for centuries without getting any form of recognition for those efforts that they have been making over time. But then we see people, other persons just come in the first year and the second year and they're already getting high recognitions for their contributions and it makes me wonder or ask the question what happened to the existing individuals that have been in the picture before this other person came on or this, before this person this other person came into the picture so we should also consider recognizing and celebrating the diverse contributions from our communities in every way or in any ways that we can we can also move as further as promoting awareness for mental health and wellness within our communities. Yes, our maintainers get burnt out. Our <laughs> our leaders get burnt out. And so many times, if not watched or if not monitored, it leads to silent quitting. And you see people leaving your community at the end of the day and you're asking questions like, what did I do wrong? Or um, did you not treat you well enough? Or did you see a better offer? Sometimes they see a better offer where their mental health and wellness is actually taken as a, a priority compared to your community. So that is something as an individual open source community or contributor, you should also work towards improving on. And then some of the awesome open source projects that I have participated in that ha have been doing awesome projects. I want to give accolades to these communities because not only have they made effort towards leading um, DEI initiatives, but they're looking for ways to champion it and effectively enforce it to other open source communities. And I'm talking about the All In Project. And um, I, I watched um, a few videos from Dimitri explaining how this project and um, the scope of this project and also went over it. And I really love how it is going or the direction which the All In Project is aimed towards 
the inclusive naming because so many times our words do more harm than our actions you might be surprised at how much your words a little word or statement you utter towards someone will um how much damage it can make over time without even realizing it and the inclusive naming community is another awesome one that is taking up this initiative to make sure that within our open source communities the language which we use in communicating how we are able to like um communicate with people the language and um our naming and basically how we write our documentations how we you know um, approach communications in our chat platforms and so many other things are taken into action and are implemented on to make it more inclusive now we have these software development diversity and inclusion initiatives which is also leading other actions towards um, diversity equity and inclusion that is also another project that i really love its goal and i love the direction which this project is taking towards and I want to also recognize the Chaos community for all of the efforts that they are doing in terms of metrics, in terms of um, also leading more programs around other aspects or other areas to help drive more diversity, equity, and inclusion within the open source space at large. And that being said, I would like to wrap up by saying that um, so far we have seen so much progress and so much effort towards um, helping to advocate and champion diversity, equity, and inclusion. But in order to actually have a fast-paced and um, a widespread of this topic and this um, discussion around diversity and inclusion, we have to do more than just um, speaking about it or having our documentation right or highlight these things. We also have to acknowledge that some of our projects are far behind in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion, we have to acknowledge that addressing the elephant in the room from the top to the bottom might just be the best way to actually tackle some of these um, DEI challenges. We have to also embed inclusion alongside during the project initiation phase and not as an aftermath because most times we get to the final stage of a project before we realize that oh we made an a, we made a mistake in terms of getting inclusive members on board or getting inclusive leaders and that becomes a challenge because already already the project is at a large scale and it's hard to tackle some of these challenges we also have to leverage metrics and use our data all the time every time to inform our decision and make changes towards that using this our uh, data and finally we need more hands on deck we need more hands involved to actually move the topic of diversity equity and inclusion within our respective communities from just intentions from just intents or meaning to do it to actually making impact in real time Thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for listening. If you also want to participate as an interview, um, as an interviewee or want to share more light for our DEI interview campaign for underrepresented groups, you can always reach out and um um, I'll be happy to share more light on that. You can also join us in the Chaos DEI Working Group if that is a project that you'd want to get involved in or want to know more on. You can also stay tuned because I'll be coming back here to give you updates on the final reports that we're able to get at the end of this research. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for listening.